To get things going, we'll need a Firebase project and our local development environment. Over the next few minutes, I'll show you how to set up a project from scratch. But if you're an experienced Firebase developer, I would encourage you to experiment with your own project. Many of the examples we'll look at in this course are common use cases that you can hopefully apply to your own code base. Now, the only assumptions I'm making at this point is that you have a Firebase project and that you have Node.js installed on your local development machine. Now, before we do anything in code, it's worth noting that you can set up Firebase security rules directly in the Firebase console. The console is really nice because you can edit your rules for Firestore, Storage, and the real-time database directly in the browser. Throughout the course, we'll be focused on Firestore because that's where the majority of your complexity will be. The console has a couple of really nice features that you should know about. First of all, it provides a history of all of your previously saved rules. That means if you break something, you can quickly roll back to a previous version. That's cool, but what you'll also notice right below that is the rules playground. The playground allows you to submit a mock request to your rules to see if it's allowed or denied. It's really nice to be able to do that right here in the console. But towards the end of the course, we'll also set up our own unit tests, allowing us to submit mock requests in a much more sophisticated and reliable way. The other extremely useful thing you should know about is the analytics provided for rules under the monitor rules tab. This will tell you how many times your rules evaluated to an allow, deny, or error. Generally, what you want to see here is a lot of allows and hopefully not very many denies or errors. And an error, by the way, will be denied by default. But for whatever reason, it didn't evaluate properly, so it might have been a rule that should have been allowed, causing a bad user experience. It should prevent requests to the backend that would cause a denied operation. For example, if only logged in users can create an item, your UI should hide the button to create an item for users that are not logged in. On Fireship, over the last seven days, we had 2.1 million allows, two denies, and 12 errors. Overall, I think that looks really good, but we'll still want to investigate the errors to see what the issue is there. Now let's take a look at the actual syntax of Firestore rules. You'll notice it looks kind of like JSON, but it's not actually JSON. It's actually a language developed by Google called Common Expression Language. It's a very simple language to work with and is also used for Firebase storage rules. However, one confusing aspect of the Firebase platform is that the real-time database uses an entirely different syntax. Many of the underlying concepts that we'll explore in Firestore are identical and can be applied to real-time database, and that's just a result of Firebase being an acquired company that had already developed this product before it became a part of Google. Now that we've taken a look at the Firebase console, let's go ahead and jump into VS Code and connect the Firebase project in the cloud to our local development environment. Before we do anything in VS Code, let's go ahead and install the Firebase rules extension. This will give us syntax highlighting, and code completion when we start writing the actual rules. From there, we need to authenticate with our Firebase project in the cloud. Open up the terminal and install Firebase tools using the G flag for global to make the Firebase command globally available on your system. When that's complete, you should have access to the Firebase command and the first command we'll run is Firebase login. That should bring up a window in the browser where you can authenticate with your Google account and then your command line will be logged into Firebase. Now, as you can see here in my editor, I'm working with a React app. We're not going to be writing React code in this course, and it's just here to demonstrate a few examples. The code is available on GitHub if you want to follow along, or like I mentioned earlier, you're welcome to follow along in your own project. The important part of this course is the security rules code, and it works the same for any platform, whether that be the web, iOS, or Android. In our case, we're targeting the web, and no matter what framework you're using, the next step is to run Firebase init from the command line. The first thing it'll do is ask us which services we want to connect to our local project. For this course, we'll select Firestore, Storage, Emulators, and Cloud Functions. After that, it will have you connect your project, and for everything else, we can just choose the default options. You'll notice that created a bunch of new files, which you can see are colored green here in my project. The important one to focus on right now is Firestore rules. When you open the file, you should see the same rules that you currently have saved in the Firestore console. What I want to show you now is how to make a change to your Firestore rules locally and then push them to the cloud. I'll make a slight modification to the rules, and you don't have to understand what this means yet, but basically I'm going to allow reads to the database by saying allow read, and then I will disallow writes by saying allow write if false, which will of course always be false, and run Firebase deploy flag only Firestore colon rules. That'll take your local rules file and immediately deploy it to the cloud. If we go back to the console and refresh the page, the changes we made should be reflected there. And of course we can use the history to go back in time if needed. And that takes care of our initial setup. 
and the upcoming videos will look at the actual syntax and concepts that you need to know to secure your application logic.